And what took you to the Sinai Peninsula? Uh, the, we went as a multinational force and observer. It's from the Jimmy Carter era treaty between uh, Israel and Egypt in the late 70s, early 80s. Part of the treaty was from the top, from the Mediterranean down to the tip of the Sinai, they were going to have observers and controllers to make sure that the Israelis didn't cross the border and the Egyptians vice versa. So we went in 2002 in lieu of uh, the 101st Airborne and we had control of uh, the tip of here of Israel down to the tip of the Sinai. We had outposts and the guys would go out there for 21 days at a time and sit in these outposts and basically watch for airplanes and make sure nobody crossed the border. So how would you characterize your time there? Uh, it was fun. It was kind of boring. We were away from our family. It was the first big deployment in Oregon since World War II. Uh, I stayed at what we called South Camp. I worked with the logistics department. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot to do job-wise, so a lot of downtime, watched a lot of movies, went swimming in the Red Sea, took trips as you can see, several trips. Uh, just recently, a year ago, it was a much different situation. I had a friend that went back, and in that time, there were several bombings. No American soldiers got killed, but they bombed uh, suicide bombers right near the camp. So it's, it is, when we were there, it was very quiet, but it has turned into a, a, a more hostile spot. Last March we went to Hokkaido, Japan, spent uh, two weeks there training with the uh, Japanese National Defense Force. Uh, every year three or four National Guard units will go to Japan for winter training. There's a treaty involved in that. I got to work with the Japanese soldiers, Japanese culture, that was kind of a treat. It was kind of cold, but getting to work with a different culture and experience, it was, it was fun. Did you get to uh, talk much about the history that our two nations have had over the years? And was that ever a topic? No, no. We didn't really go into it in depth. The language barriers and uh, my knowledge at the time was not that great. But to back into reading history books, the, shortly thereafter I read a book called Flyboys, written by the son of one of the sons from one of the men on the flag of Iwo Jima, putting up the flag of Iwo Jima. And that book sure opened your eyes up to how their culture and our culture used to be, the violence. Uh, I was in the Air Force for four years during the height of the Cold War. I was involved in generating two brand new nuclear weapon systems and, and the Russian inspectors watching one of them be taken down. Where was that at? Uh, ground launch cruise missiles in Sicily. They uh, built them up and then two years later they were taking them down. That's part of what uh, brought the Russians to their knees. The Soviets broke the Soviets back. So we put all these short-range nuclear missiles right near their border and they could not keep up and their economy fell apart and we just broke them financially. And then the, they, the second one was the generation of the first B-1 bomber with uh, nuclear weapons. And then you dismantled them as well? We brought the missiles online in Sicily and then I went to, back, came back to Texas for a year and a half and going back they had the Russian inspectors, they'd signed the, I think it was the START Treaty and they were uh, dismantling the short range nuclear missiles. Can you talk about your own personal thoughts on nuclear weapons? Uh, at the time a strong defense, uh, uh, I mean it was, there was a cold war, there was an arms race and we won the arms race. Because of having that deterrent on the... Well basically my understanding of it is we uh, we had a better gross national product and we were able to produce more and them trying to keep up was at the neglect of their people and uh, the people finally revolted and said no more. So it helped get rid of the Soviet Union, now there's Russia. It was a little more friendlier. It was scary times back then. We don't worry, I don't think the kids today worry about a nuclear threat like we did back then. 